All right, guys, it's Dylan from Cardboard Reality. I have Max here from Resin M Games. How you doing, Max? Doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. So we got a chance to demo this game here, Visitor in Blackwood Grove. Uh, Joel actually bought a copy yesterday, so that was really exciting. And uh, tell us a little bit about the game and your uh, guys' uh, studio. Sure. Uh, so Visitor in Blackwood Grove, uh, you're probably familiar with the story. It's the 80s, and an alien has crashed in the woods outside town. Um, one player plays the alien itself. One player plays the kid trying to save the alien, and the rest of the players play the agents trying to dissect the alien. What's cool about the game is, in order to win, you need to figure out what kinds of objects will pass through a mystical force field. Mm -hmm. Maybe you'll see something like uh, an apple passes through, and peanuts pass through, and a hot dog passes through. Maybe it's things that our food can go through. You need to figure that out in order to win, um, and, it, and it's a five to ten minute um, and a three to six player game. What's interesting about the game is it's also a two versus one. A lot of people know one versus one versus all game, uh, one versus all games such as like Descent. But you have a two versus all game where the kid and the alien work together. Tell us a little bit about where that inspiration came from. Yeah, well, so clearly it goes with the genre, right? right? You have these kids who are helping these aliens or mystical creatures in whatever uh, is your chosen like '80s uh, flick of choice. Um, but from a game design standpoint, it was really important for us to let the Alien have a reason to make to make up a rule, as you'll see in the game, you have to make up a rule that is easy enough that the that one player can get it. So that means we needed to have one player on the team with them. Mm -hmm. And everything else kind of just fell into place. Then right. there would need to be other players against them. And uh, we didn't want the agents to have an advantage if there were tons of them. Um, so they're each against each other as well. Right. That's a nice way of doing it as well. Um, the interesting thing I think about the game is you also have, like, the kid has its own player board, and it, like, the kid slowly gains more and more powers. Tell us, tell us a little bit about that and how that like incorporates into the game. Yeah, absolutely. So, we wanted the entire core of the game was how do you make an alien, the alien player, come up with a rule that the other players are trying to figure out that is easy enough that it can even be gotten, mm -hmm. but hard enough that it's not too easy, right? Right. So they want to make it hard so the agents don't get it, but in order to make it um, not too hard, we needed to add something. Mm -hmm. Um, so what we did was we said, the game ends in eight, eight turns if nobody gets the rule. Over the course of the game, the kid goes up on that trust board, mm -hmm. giving them way more powers. So by the end of the game, they actually know more things than the, than the uh, agents do. Thus, uh, the goal of the visitor is to make the hardest possible rule, uh, because if, if it's really hard, it'll take the, all of the kid's trust to get it. But none of the agents will have enough information to get it themselves. Interesting, interesting. Uh, how did you did make the, uh, the decision on what objects made it on the cards? <laughs> um, well, we come up with, came up with a bunch of rules. So, like, we have the rule, things, things that are food. We have things that contain the color red. We have things that contain metal. We have things that fit in a car. We have things you can, uh, uh, I don't know, things you can lift. Mm -hmm. We came up with a ton of those. And then we said, okay, what objects can we add that will roughly split the deck 50-50 for each of these rules? Mm -hmm. um, and then we added a bunch of things. And because of that, it has a lot of flexibility, right? You can actually invent any rule you want, mm -hmm. and most of them will work. Right. Um, then we added a lot of fun ones that we really like. Like, my favorite is the visitor box itself is in the game. Oh, yes, I noticed that. It was, I was like, this is super meta for you to just include that. Um, what games inspired uh, this design? Um, so there are a few games in the same space. Zendo is a classic one. Ah, uh, yes. Um, in which, again, you're trying to figure out a rule that one player has in mind. The only issue with Zendo, in my mind, is that the player who makes that rule doesn't actually play. They're kind of like a GM. We've actually just discussed Zendo on the show, and that was Nick's complaint with it, was that uh, you had to have a moderator, so you exactly. just felt absent from the game. Um, so our goal was to make the visitor making that rule actually be able to play. Mm -hmm. We also really like Green Glass Door, which is a very specific version of this game. Ah. Um, it's not replayable, but there's only one rule. I recommend you play it. I shouldn't spoil it, but um, I can tell you that the moon goes through the Green Glass Door, but the sun doesn't. And similarly, you test a bunch of things, just like in Visitor. Um, and that was one of the inspirations as well. Wow, that's really cool. Uh, tell us a little, about your guys, a little bit about your guys' studio. Yep. So I designed Visitor, uh, I co-designed Visitor with Mary Flanagan, my boss and mentor. She is the founder of Resonim. Um, we make a bunch of very interesting, kind of unusual games. Visitor is pretty unusual. Our mm -hmm. other games, uh, including Monarch, are also pretty strange. Um, and we're up in New Hampshire. We are making game concepts every week. I think we've made four over the past week, past wow. uh, past month. And we're testing them out and trying them out and bringing them to Kickstarter. Uh, tell us a little bit about Monarch. That was one that we haven't got to really mm -hmm. hear much about. So in Monarch, you play as the Daughters of the Queen. And your mother is dying. She's going to pass on the crown to the most worthy among you. And so you collect a court of wise advisors, exotic animals, and important regalia to prove yourself worthy. Cool. What mechanics? 
Um, so it's a kind of tableau builder. Okay. Where nice. you're collecting cards that work well in your court together, so that, that regalia and those kinds of things, the trappings of uh, being the queen. Really cool, really cool. Uh, when can we expect Visitor to hit stores? And I understand that it is a special case for how it's hitting stores? Yes, so Visitor is Target exclusive, which means the only place you'll be able to find it coming August 1st is Target and Target.com. If you're like me, you may have to get it online. We don't have a Target nearby us. Right. That, that's a great partnership for you guys. You guys are, 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 are you guys a pretty new publisher? We've been been around a, uh, a little bit, but we're, this is kind of our biggest, our first big hit game. Good, um, and we're very excited about the Target uh, exclusive. We like our local game stores, but we also like normal people who have never heard of a game store to be able to get the board game. Totally agree with that. They, I'm seeing that Target is a great place for like those people to really get those like Ticket to Ride level, Carcassonne level games, understand the hobby, and then really make the deep dive. So this is a great addition to that. Um, that is Visitor in Blackwood Grove. So thanks again for taking the time to talk to us, Max. Absolutely. I really appreciate that. Um, that's Dylan. I'm Dylan from Cardboard Reality, and we're going to be signing off.